Hello and welcome to another video where today I'm going to be looking at uh, what we would refer to as like a vicious cycle of knee pain um, by failing to address what, what really is the source of the problem. So um, so firstly, uh, you know, just to paint the picture of how um, how severe knee pain sort of the the steady increase of people that are getting it. This this graph is sort of a, there's millions of statistics you can look at, but I found this one was quite um, really stood out to me as quite astounding. You know, from if you considering all the amount of technology we have today and the the amount of health practitioners since the you know the 80s and 90s and the the increase of knee replacements from for people. Um, this is just United States. This isn't even looking at um, other countries which are very similar, you know, the, the, the increase of the amount of the percentage of people per, this is per 10,000 people, like just how many more there are is just astounding and, and the amount of people I see, you know, you know, for things that really are not bad luck or to do with old age, just really not looking after yourself. So, um, and part of the problem is our treatment process for it really doesn't look at why it's there but in just trying to get rid of pain and you know and, and leaving it to so long that eventually that is the only the only resort you have left but you know the things that should have been done earlier were ignored so for example um, I really love this quote here from Dr. Evan Osar um, you know, where osteoarthritis more accurately described as degenerative joint disease is just really one manifestation of poor movement strategies and not a process of getting older. So, you know, we can sort of see here, you know, where the gradual progression of osteoarthritis kicks in and along this point in time, other movements, you know, were severely limited. So maybe weight gain and uh, came along for the ride, maybe back pain, other things, you know, and then eventually you're walking with a, with a cane and, and looking for a knee replacement. but um, really the signs were early on that, that you could have done something about it before it got to that stage. So so this is a, I took this uh, video idea from one that we did on piriformis syndrome and hip pain because it was something that come up a lot and I decided to use the same approach here and just change some of the, um, the, the factors that are, are contributing. So firstly, I call this a vicious cycle because it's usually a habit or a or trauma or an incident where the initial injury is born. But in knee pain, most of the time it's it's some poor movement strategy that you've been just using re repeatedly that leads to this big problem. All right, so th this is really the key to the everything that follows it. If you didn't have this, all these other steps wouldn't be a, a problem. So after the when this is being used a lot, instability and stiffness are going to be the end result. So. And the two common areas of the knee problems are always looking at the feet and the pelvis. So the two joints above and below. So I probably could put the ankle amongst the feet there. So ankle slash foot and hip slash pelvis. But um, usually the feet and the pelvis become unstable and stiffness results in the ankle and the hips. And they, they are basically trying to uh, create a new form of stability for you. Um, unfortunately when they do that it inhibits really important muscles in the uh, process of providing you with just maybe walking, um, not even considering running or jumping or anything, just walking and just standing on one leg. The, these two guys here are playing a massive role in this, but they're greatly inhibited by the um, problems up above. All right, so so now when, they're, when all this sort of corruption is taking place, the VMO and the glutes go into a real weakening um, stage because so, their inhibition to do anything is sort of greatly um, present so that they now no longer begin to do as much and the longer that stays the way the more weaker they become and the more the compensatory movements start to take over. Um, and then the hips at the same time and especially vastus lateralis which is on the outside of the, the leg so he's he's one that sort of does the exact opposite to the VMO he starts to steal work from the VMO along with the hips and this compensation. So if that's weakness, this is this is like overactivity. This, these guys are just doing way too much and we often see this with the adductors as well. So, and again, this is for a specific reason. It's trying to create a new stability because you're not doing it well up here. Do you see what I mean? So 
um, just stretching it without addressing the weakness and without addressing the movement is really pointless and this is where a lot of people make a lot of mistakes because they might be just doing one of them maybe just this one or maybe just this one usually this one's ignored ironically which is this very important and we'll come back to that in a minute but um, so once you're sort of getting through this stage it's about now that the pain is starting to become great um, things like the patella start to become moved into poor positions and now cartilage meniscus and ligaments like the ASCL are going to be really at risk here because the, these sort of things that are happening are getting bigger and bigger apart um, and the joint and especially the patella starting to get moved into awful positions. Um, compensatory movement starts to become even more pronounced so there's more compensation to, to counter the pain. You try to create ways of moving that don't create pain but they're not ideal movements, they're just alternatives. Um, and now you're going to be at a point where new injuries begin to surface. So and this is when you start to see other things come up and now you're in that chronic vicious cycle where once all this sort of stays there long enough, these new patterns start to become encoded into your brain and nervous system and now they're kept as permanent changes. And then this is where you start to go round and round in circles again with a new habit or trauma creating from this. So can you see how easily this can get really out of hand by not addressing the things early on and these things here are often missed and they're not really even looked at. Um, they're usually people are going straight to here or here and never really addressing movement and, and that's why their problems will compound. So how do you break free of the cycle? Well, well there's a lot of things you need to do but I've sort of given you a few clues there, really eliminating the, the habits, trying to restore the hip mobility, ankle mobility probably along with that. Um, then trying to prove the stability of the hip and the feet, then reprogramming the movement patterns and then trying to strengthen. You sort of have to do it in this order because of the muscle inhibition. That's why we this, this hip mobilizing stuff comes before strengthening. Um, and the stability, this, these sort of two sort of fall hand in hand but you might need regressions of movement patterns to better train this because there's so much um, compensation at play. So. Um, so if I just sort of quickly go into it, just so we don't make this video go for two hours, but um, eliminating repetitive habits. So you need to look at like poor running form, like for example, like this, this person here is always going to have trouble with the knees um, and, the, and probably the feet and the hip, probably all three joints, but the knees probably going to be the first to go. All right, so looking at things like running, sitting too long, um, what footwear you wear, what work tasks you do, what gym technique you use, maybe what sports you play, or, um, or anything you're doing repetitively that's a leg movement. You really need to look at it. Is, is this a good movement or is, am I doing this poorly? If you're doing it poorly, you've got to start changing it. So this is identifying where the leak is coming from. Um, then you're sort of working through your mobility and your stretching like we said because you need to start here because the goal is to try and release the bad stiffness that's corrupting everything and stop the overworking muscles from doing so much. Um, so quads, I always see quads really, really stiff and tight in, an, in, in people with knee pain. Uh, ankles often stiff and tight and obviously hips. So they're things that I, I would look at very closely. Um, then moving into the second part, we were looking at stability. I'm really looking closely at the feet and also glutes and pelvic um, stability. So, um, so these, this must be restored prior to strengthening. If we don't do this, we, we just really enhance our faulty movement with, with more stuff. So um, it's this sort of stage is probably more skills. So it's the frustrating stage. It's really about trying to quality move movement. Um, with the feet I often will train a lot of barefoot work here to try and encourage good big toe placement, better activation of the feet to stop the ankles really becoming stiff um, and obviously trying to progress, you know, maybe isolated glute stage stuff might be used here but I really want to get into a single lance, single leg stuff where really trying to get the team to play together but it's not hard enough to be strengthening, it's just about skills. So mobility drills might be really useful here as well. All right, so this stage is very frustrating for most people. Um, in the movement pattern stage, which sort of shares stuff from the last stage, this is where we start to move into things how they're really used. So lunging, bending, single leg squatting and traditional squatting, they're all the, the big ones, obviously all leg things. They all have 
certain requirements with joints being needed to move in different positions and angles and, um, and if you can really get this stage well it really sets you up for the for preventing a lot of the problems that you that you will see in that in that that come up over and over in the last stage is really where you start obviously it's just where you start to apply load and, and um, and other variables that that will increase muscle strength you know so um, obviously barbells and weight vests dumbbells and all these different things and, and if you do if you've done the last stage well then this stage should be a, a little bit easier to work through again quality is everything and you just really need a bit a fair bit of time to to reset your faulty programs to a, an ideal one um, um, the last stage which is probably a step 4a or 5 I suppose you could say doesn't apply to everyone but it does apply to people who play sports and and if you do play sports this this phase is really 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 important this is where um, you're really learning how to to use good form to create cutting angles that are used in the um, that we see with ACL injuries and landing from a jump as well um, so strength won't override poor movement here this is this is really done so quickly um, that if you're only the only program that your brain knows is a faulty one it won't matter how strong your legs are you will still blow out your knee all right and this will have everything to do with um, foot ankle and hip and, and how they align and how they create the perfect sort of positions to create um, speed power and especially braking all right so this this stage is vital for sports but not necessarily necessary if you're someone who doesn't play sport big mistakes to avoid so failing to identify the repetitive movement early on and, and begin changing it or at least eliminating um, skipping the mobility stage I often see people do that they just don't really see the point of it um, just I get so many questions every day about how can I strengthen my VMO and I'm doing the exercises as shown in in these pictures here and these are these isolated exercises will actually do very little to change anything and if in some cases will significantly make it worse this one here is an example this is just a really a hip flexor movement this is not a VMO exercise at all this is just this will do nothing to change how you there's no requirement of the foot for example either so um, all these lying stuff really have no very little to be gained from them, a lot to be lost so so ignorance to foot stability compromising quality of movement to just try and strengthen ignorance to looking or even changing a running technique and then the same thing with the cutting technique in sports so they're the big mistakes I often see made and this is why people go round and round in circles wasting their time with strengthening exercises for one particular muscle when it's really it's the combination of how the, they're used and especially in a standing position in single leg um, squeezing balls is a really bad thing to do again you're just going to create more adductor activity and faulty hip alignment it's going to give you everything you don't want all right so um, so what do you do well there's tons of videos we've already released on our YouTube channel you can look at this playlist there for you as well um, there's a on our website there's tons of articles have a look in the description under this video there's a, a, an extended video that, that gives you everything in terms of assessments and a step-by-step -step approach of how to do it for ACL injuries we go even into a little bit more depth and we look at the sports sort of stuff that's following it um, and there's a book that comes with it with this as, a, as an instruction manual with all the programs mapped out for you so if you go to our website it's all in the link below it will have everything what you need to do there but but just really understand that you, you want to come back to what that vicious cycle was where what, what's happening here is you know you really want to these early the early things are where you can get on top of it quickly if you're leaving it to this point it's re, it's going to take you a bit of time not impossible but it will take you a bit of time so so if you can really spend the time to do it right then you, you know then you will break free from the vicious cycle and and have no more pain all right so i hope you've enjoyed that video i'll see you on our next one